All right, welcome to the Dodgeball Marketing <laughs> Pocket. We've been told that we need. To, we've been told that we need to use a frame by the people that do our thumbnails. Here's here's my idea. You. <laughs> There we, we go. go. There's your frame. Yeah. Ariana, there's your frame. So you can use that for a fun thumbnail to get that sweet uh, click through rate. That's right. Good. All right. Well, welcome. Michael, what are we talking about? This is yeah. episode uh, number, no, this is number six. Six. What are we talking about today? Tell yeah. Me. Happy Friday. Welcome to the podcast. This is Dodgeball Marketing Podcast. I'm Michael. This or whatever course. day it is. Where, yeah. Yeah. It's that's Friday right. here. Yeah. It we could always be record Friday. on Fridays. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to just talk about how everyone became a publisher content's role in SEO. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get us started off. Uh, yeah, back in the day, products like uh, laundry detergent had you know the radio hour, and then that turned into the TV hour. And so yeah, well, they would response like that's where soap yeah. opera came from. Right? Yeah, soap opera the came soap from companies that's right. literally own yeah the show. Yeah, they was, own the show. They did, there weren't like uh, there weren't like these big networks that were sort of. Uh, content departments the way that uh, Netflix has been a very similar sort of echo historically of this but the uh, the, the broadcast networks were more technology companies mm -hmm. uh, they, they were really more like hey we own <laughs> this platform we own this capability and the, brand but then the was brands would say content. hey we're gonna come up with a show we've got an idea for a show yeah and we want to buy this broadcast time and space yeah uh, at a certain time and this this goes back to kind of the radio model of content production but you only had you know major markets in the Northeast that had some of these shows right. um, and so yeah but but where where this uh, this use of content to attract people it was a way of it was essentially a way of using storytelling to get people around the fire yeah so you could also make a few announcements and, oh. and be in charge of the village or you know whatever yeah. so it's yeah it's really really sort of primal in, in my opinion uh, and so yeah so these screens uh, that we all sort of huddle around individually they're really no different than the old campfire and so content storytelling um, is still at the heart <coughs> of any kind of getting people together uh, you know fireworks are limited you know you can't you can only attract a crowd in certain weather conditions and outdoors with with fireworks uh, some sort of spectacle like a circus you really can't yeah. you really can't travel with that but media and storytelling the, the, and any anything that's helpful that kind of solves problems fiction or nonfiction it's it's really the role of content in the human experience and yeah. the difference now is that you don't have to be a giant consumer packaged goods company yeah. to put content out there everybody is a content producer now yeah which is exciting so it's yeah just, just like it was in the 1950s I guess is when right. that was um, except now the actual produ production of the content is totally democratized anyone can write a blog do a video mm -hmm. do an audio piece so um, yeah and I, live. And, and I think of it as like a magazine I think of like the different formats of content they're different there are different ways that content can be formatted uh, for you know, if you're a company, you know any any kind of organization. If you're a nonprofit, you're trying to attract members and donors. If you're uh, a healthcare delivery company, you're trying to attract patients. If you offer a service in your market locally or regionally, and you're trying to attract sales leads, uh, or if you're a university and you're trying to get students to enroll at your university versus somewhere else, there's any number of different. Uh, formats of content that people can use uh, so the way a magazine is kind of messy uh, you know a novel is pretty clean a novel is the same you know long-form narrative start to finish but a magazine is kind of chunky so I think of magazines as being sort of the uh, the reference point for a website uh, every every website that any company or organization is running essentially has uh, this magazine publisher role that they've backed into, whether they know it or not. You know, they may have a blog and a few social media channels, but not realize just how much work and effort goes in just to producing that level of uh, variety of material, a variety of formats of material. Right. And then, uh, yeah, and so uh, other other formats that are popular, uh, especially in a lot of the big ticket B two B complex sale type industries that that we do a lot of work in, uh, blogs, white papers, infographics podcasts, videos, video podcasts, interactive tools, uh, and uh, things like business directories. Um, it's very common for a company like, say, Home Advisor to sell uh, leads because they've essentially positioned themselves as a business directory. Well, a business directory is just another form of content. Yeah. Yeah. It's just organized content. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll say one thing about these different modalities of content, the, uh, and we've said this before, but the, the really cool thing about 
um, where we are now with the democratization of technology. I mean, look at look at what we're doing now. This is yeah. a camera. This camera. This is probably a, a, on the nicer side of a DSLR camera. So we might have a, a, around a thousand dollars or under a thousand dollars at the point. most. Yeah. Um, but this could very very well easily be a cell phone. Yeah. Something like that, and we would probably get a very similar result. And and so you already have the. Um, it's all about the the content itself. So you already have the. Uh, production pieces available to you to mm -hmm. use so there's really not a uh, uh, an excuse to mm -hmm. not become a video content publisher or not become an audio mm -hmm. content publisher because it's so easy yeah and and video is really great because video has um, uh, an explosively high level of popularity in recent years uh, I often will describe YouTube as the second largest search engine uh, after Google uh, video content since broadband has exploded in popularity and the variety of formats for content uh, in video has really changed yeah. shorter uh, shorter videos are very popular with social media uh, medium links I'd say two to you know two to 20 minutes yeah. YouTube but then uh, people are consuming multiple hours of video in the form of uh, video podcasts that are very yeah. popular and, um, and and again it's all I can't stress enough that it's all about the quality of the content itself and how valuable the content is versus production value yeah so don't get into um, this scenario where you, you're like oh I got to get a camera or, I got to save up money to hire a crew like go to here, here's an example go to yeah. if you go to YouTube right now and type in something like how to change a radiator on a Honda Civic I bet I mean, I haven't done this, but yeah. uh, similar searches like that, auto repair. I bet one of the top videos is some Yahoo Yep. that's like, all right, here we go. We're going to dig her. It's, it's going to be like literally somebody's cell phone video holding it. Um, but the content, the, the value of it is he's actually showing someone how to do something that's going to save them money and it's going to save them time or whatever. Yeah. So all that to say... Um, don't let the mo the what type of camera you're using and the mode of production be yeah. something to say. If you if you're a business, if you have a, sell a product or a service, you have something valuable to offer people that can either save them time or money or enhance their life. Mm -hmm. And um, you can as long as you that comes through, you don't need to wait to hire a crew or to like save up and get a nice camera or lights or any of this stuff. We're not using any. Of, this yeah. is literally just a camera. A little yeah, we do. We do have a shot. We, we do have a shotgun mic on top. Yeah. Today. So we've up, up the production yeah, value, yeah. but this is all about the content we're doing, yeah. and it's and it's not about production value. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and video video is great for all those reasons, uh, and uh, it's it's really good um, for creating a presence on YouTube as essentially an additional lead generation engine. Uh, so we um, we have found that we can drive leads directly from YouTube. Uh, for campaigns that we do where we produce video for campaigns because um, you can have a phone number and a call to action in the description and generate leads directly from that content. So think about your website as the hub of your marketing, but you can even have uh, video content out there working uh, either in social media or in YouTube and generating lead activity without people even coming to the website. Uh, and then, um, Chris, what would you say is, is your sort of opinion on how, let's talk about a little bit more about all these different formats. Uh, I'll just interview you for a second. You know, blogs are sort of uh, the the go-to um, form of content for SEO, for search engine optimization, mm -hmm. for showing up higher in search results by having a lot of good subject matter on your website. But white papers, infographics, and then multimedia stuff, and then even interactive tools and directories. How do you find, like what, what's been your opinion on kind of what's the most effective and where do you, th what do you think of when you think of sort of content production and strategy for gaining new business? Hmm. So I think um, text is always good because it's, it, it marries directly with search engine optimization. But I think those higher level forms of content I, I like to look at it as downstream. So if you do a blog post that, that's a collection of text and maybe a few images, um, that's pretty much the format. Mm -hmm. But let's say, but let's say you do a video. Well, that video can then also become a blog post through transcript and re reorganizing that. Mm -hmm. and that Which we do, also, yeah, we do that quite a bit, yeah. And it can also be a um, um, an audio podcast, mm -hmm. and it can also become a uh, a uh, image if you 
take a quote, kind of the Gary Vee approach. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Distributing it can also mm -hmm. be an image with a quote on it that you put on social media. So um, I think the more you can, when I think of content like modalities, the more you can ascend from text to audio mm -hmm. to image to video, the more it can work downstream and it can populate all those other areas. So if you can, and I've heard um, Gary Vaynerchuk and other people talk about this, like mm -hmm. if, go to the highest one that you can. So video is not for a lot of people. A lot of people freak out when they get on camera and they're self-conscious yeah. and just it's not for it's them. It's hard. It takes time to produce video. Yeah. And, um, so if that's not for you, then don't do it. If you're really good at writing, just sitting down and banging out text and do that. Um, but if you can do video, do video because it can you can knock out video and then suddenly you get audio and text and all these other formats too. So when yeah. when it, when it comes to best bang for your buck in terms of getting your content footprint out there, like I think the higher you can ascend audio, video, the better. That's great. That's a great way to think about it. And thank you, Gary Vee, for, for that great uh, set of ideas that Chris is referencing. Uh, yeah, and so um, we've done that quite a bit. So we'll, we'll use even... Uh, well, this will be this will be yeah. a video. This will be a video. So we'll have we'll have a YouTube page, and uh, yeah, I can speak to this because I just saw how this is all published because we just started publishing yeah. this one. But this this will have its own YouTube page. Uh, it will be added to a YouTube playlist, which generates a, a second set of URLs and pages that can be indexed. Mm -hmm. um, the full transcript, title tags, description will all be loaded and audited and optimized in the YouTube listing for mm -hmm. SEO purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll have it published on Dodgeball uh, uh, marketing uh, podcast section of dodgeballseo.com. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a uh, podcast landing page uh, and we'll have podcast in the top nav, which is good for SEO if anybody's looking for podcast on online marketing. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have individual pages for the podcast where the video will be embedded and then we'll have an audio version embedded and then a full transcript on the page below those embedded players and then we'll have the audio version will go out to hundreds of different uh, podcasting platforms mm -hmm. so not only are we using YouTube as a publishing platform and our own website but the audio version will go out to all these different variety of different players and yep. those all generate inbound links back to the website so yeah let's, so let's, so that's just using video as a starting point exactly yeah. let's can I got an idea let's can we have through about three minutes left here let's contextualize all this for a real life like a boring business okay so I, I'm a uh, tax accountant Yep. in Dallas-Fort Worth. Great. Perfectly boring business. I have local clientele, but I can do business elsewhere too. How would you take this kind of philosophy and start producing content? Yeah, so the first thing I would do, we, we always start with the editorial schedule. So I would, okay, so here's what I do. Uh, we, we do have three minutes, so we'll, we'll, we'll do this. Um, so number one, what are the pain points that your customers have? What, what is their pain? You should be able to produce a one to two page document that outlines all the reasons anybody would ever reach out to you. So that's step one, pain points. Step two, keywords. What are the keywords that your customers use? Not what you call it. And a lot of these not are coming the inside. Form. A yeah. lot of these come in the form of questions. Yeah, a lot of them are questions now, especially with... Can uh, I write off my ex yes. for taxes? Yep, a very specific question. You're not offering that as a standalone service. That's not your service. Uh, so don't get so far in your own head about your jargon of what you call things. What are the pain points? What are the ways that customers are articulating things? So number two is uh, keyword research. <laughs> Just knowing how do my users um, search for things. Number three, uh, put together an editorial schedule. Say, hey, during this time of the year I need to talk about this, this time of year I need to talk about this. Just kind of rough it out by month, just say every month. And then on that editorial schedule, go left to right with the different channels that mm -hmm. you can populate. Well, I can put it on my website. If I make something, some content, I can put it on my website, I can put it on Facebook, I can put it on LinkedIn, I can send it out as an email newsletter. Uh -huh. So then you've got an editorial schedule. Next, mm -hmm. uh, start to populate it. Say, I'm going to make a three minute video and answer this question. And, and then, it can be as simple as something. It, like it could be right just here. a one take, no editing, iPhone, 
video, prop it up on some books, do whatever you need to do, glue it to the wall, whatever you need to do to capture audio and video together, turn that camera sideways to get that nice landscape view, or even set yourself up to record a square. Uh, that's fine because that works pretty well for a lot of different formats. But yeah, then uh, just start to take that content and push it out to, column number one should probably always be your website, uh, but then all of these other different placements that you have access to. If you're a tax yeah. accountant, maybe you want to focus on LinkedIn a little bit, yep. try that out. Yeah, if you're just going to do one social media channel, make it LinkedIn, yeah. Do videos and then publish LinkedIn articles that you mm -hmm. can link to, populate that article section. Okay, Absolutely. I just wanted to throw something yeah. out there because we're yeah, talking about great, what we do. That's a great example. Any, yeah. any business, no matter how like boring and how uh, you know normal it is, can kind of use yeah. this same kind of framework, the yeah. same framework we're using. Really what we've just done in a matter of three minutes is articulate uh, a content development strategy that you could engage a consultant you know for five thousand dollars to produce for you or you could just follow what we just said literally what we just said yeah and just get out and, and you know you'd have to learn how to do the keyword research by you know getting online and figuring out or just check some of our other uh, podcast episodes for that but yeah and of course like anything that we cover on the podcast if you have questions want to talk about it talk about your unique situation what you're doing in your organization or your business uh, check in with us uh, we love talking to new people making new friends and uh, this was episode six how everyone became a publisher contents role in SEO and uh, hope this has been helpful and thank you and we'll see you on the next one thanks Chris later later